Hello and welcome uh, to Accounting 201, Principles of Accounting 1, uh, also known as Financial Accounting. I'm your host, Dr. B. Uh, this course is going to be a lot of fun. There are 26 students in this course. Uh, this course is on, uh, on Blackboard and on WebEx. We meet every Tuesday from 11 to 1.30 here on WebEx. Every Tuesday, 11 to 1.30. We do not meet on Thursdays. Thursdays are designated times for you to be able to meet with me in office hours and as well as additional time to complete your homework. Each week you'll have about two assignments to complete. Uh, each week we cover two chapters. This Today we're covering chapters one and two. So, uh, having said all of that, I, I want to welcome you. I thank all of you for being with me uh, today. We're, we have 22 of us in the room right now, which is fantastic. Um, I want to first and foremost uh, start by uh, introducing myself, and then I'd like to go around the room and have you introduce yourselves. Uh, to do that, please unmute your microphone when I call your name. And uh, what I'm looking for you to answer is what you hope to get out of this course. I know, I know, or I, I think I already know why you're taking this course. Most of you are uh, in the in a business program of whether it be accounting, whether it be uh, business management, hospitality. Uh, or it might just be a part of your program uh, in any of the other majors. So I already, I already know why you're taking it. What I wanna know is what you hope to get out of the course, uh, how you think this course will be applicable to your career. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Some of you are looking to open your own businesses. You might already own your own business. You might be trying to uh, learn a little bit more about management, whatever the case is. I just, I'm, I'm curious to know more about you and your ambition because that helps me to become a better professor. It helps me to craft the lecture a little bit more toward your interest. That's what makes the course fun. Okay, uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Dr. B. Uh, that's what I prefer to be called. My, uh, Dr. Brandon Schweitzer, my name is Dr. B. Uh, my last name is a little hard to pronounce, that's why. Um, I have been working as a financial controller uh, and as an educator for about ooh, better part of 20 years. I have managed, operated, and owned multi-million dollar corporations. I was responsible for the accounting for very large hotel companies in New York State, as well as in Maryland, which actually is what brought me down here. I've been teaching with UDC since 2013. Uh, in addition to that, I still do consulting for small and medium and large sized businesses for their accounting practices. Uh, in that, uh, I bring a lot of real-world experience to the classroom, and I try to make things relatable to your lives as well. A lot of the principles you'll learn in accounting can be applied to your daily lives as well as your business lives, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love accounting. Uh, it's it's fun. It's I mean, I think it's fun. A lot of people think it's fun. Why is accounting fun? Because it is a part of everyday life. There's a lot of really fun stories behind the numbers. That's why I like accounting. There's stories behind the numbers. Uh, and for me, that's what, make, that's what makes it worthwhile. Uh, why did I become a professor? I love helping people. I do. Uh, I like mentoring students to become better individuals in their daily lives as well as in their businesses. And I'm not the kind of professor that just lectures at you and, you know, it, I, I, I'm more of a holistic approach professor. What does that mean? 
I've helped many, many, many students to be able to get jobs in their desired field by helping them establish connections and relationships. I've helped students out of other situations that are well outside the, the scope and responsibility of my job. I provide true mentorship for my students uh, holistically. And I want you to feel comfortable to approach me in any situation that you may be experiencing, okay? Uh, I am, I really am here for you. You are my full-time job, okay? So please, if you ever need anything, whatever it may be, you have my cell phone number on the syllabus, you have access to my office hours, you have access to my email, and guess what? All of it goes right to my phone. My phone's always with me. So please, please, please feel free to reach out to me anytime you think you need help. And, and it could be anything, really. And, and I'll do my best to provide you with the resources that you need to, to resolve your issue. Uh, so having said that, I would love to start around the room. If you could tell me your preferred name, uh, you, the reason why you're taking this course, or uh, I'm sorry, not that. Your preferred name, what you hope to get out of this course, and how you think or what you think you might learn how it can be applicable to your uh, life or your career. And I'd like to start with Alexa. Uh, hello, I'm Alexa. Um, I, I guess, hope to get out of this course, um, I guess, a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, to put something that's with what I already know about, um, you know, business accounting and, you know, my, my experience, you know, being, um, I've worked in the restaurant industry for 10 years, which is kind of like a pretty interesting way of, you know, being able to look at business finances. So I guess it'll be interesting to have a class that shows, you know, the um, educational way of, you know, business accounting with, you know, my experience way of accounting and make it be a, a much more professional. Awesome. Very cool, Alexa. Uh, uh, welcome to the course. And you will f definitely see a lot of connections between restaurant accounting and this course through a lot of the examples. And uh, also coming from the hospitality world, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about those types of connections. So oh. welcome. And, and I really appreciate you sharing with us. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. You too. Thank you. Uh, the next I have on my list is Brandon. How's it going, Professor Schweitzer? I'm good. How are you? And I'm I'm glad you got your audio connected. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I finally got it connected. I had to turn off my phone and turn it back on, but uh, everything's good. Uh, I'm just excited, you know, get started. I'm I'm a young man. I ain't really uh get into any careers yet i'm only I'm about, I'm about to be 20 next month but uh i'm still you know exploring and i hope i find something i like about accounting going through this course and i learn something new that'll help further my professional aspect going forward so awesome. that's all i really expect from this course is just to learn something new and still explore yes wonderful brandon and, and you, you absolutely will uh i guarantee that you will you will learn a lot. Uh, it'll kind of open your eyes at, to a lot of the different as, aspects of business, um, and you might get some ideas. You know whether that be business ownership, consulting, uh, uh, other fields, and and you'll probably learn a lot from your colleagues, your your classmates as well, um, based off of their experiences, and you'll probably get some great ideas. And one thing I'll say is I totally recommend that you you explore, you uh, try different things out, get outside of your comfort zone, do new things. Uh, I promise you'll get a lot out of it. So I'm looking forward to working with you. Yes, sir. And likewise. Thank you. The next I have on my list is Katora. 
I'm here. Hi. Um, what I want to learn out of this class, I want to learn more in, about like counting, how to like manage my funds and stuff. Okay, fantastic. Um, you will definitely get some personal uh, side of things when it comes to recording transactions, managing your expenses and revenue, uh, and and how all of that can be related to uh, both the uh, professional and personal side of things. So yeah, absolutely, you'll, you'll get a lot of that. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Okay, the next I have on my list is Dante. How you doing, Professor? Hi, Dante. Hi, um, my name is Dante. I'm 24. Um, I'm taking this course because it's required for me to graduate. And about this course, I just want to learn like the basic fundamentals about accounting and profiting and handling money. Okay, cool. So, so Dante, what is it about um, uh, profit that has you interested? <laughs> um, just trying to control my money, how to handle it, and saving. Got you. Knowing where to put my money at, basically. Got it. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that, especially in the later chapters. We're going to talk about um, stocks and bonds and uh, some other uh, investments. So, so yeah, I, I have a feeling you'll, you'll definitely enjoy that part of the course as well. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you, Dante. Appreciate you sharing. Uh, next I have on my list is David. Hello, Professor. Hi. How you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Awesome. There you are. Okay, David. So tell so tell us uh, what what are you hoping to get out of the course, and um, uh, how do you think you'll be able to apply what you learn to your career or to your daily life? Um, I'm a I'm a business administration major. What I'm planning on to get out of this course is to really learn how to do accounting because I own my own business. It's a small LLC, but it don't really necessarily take the knowledge of accounting yet. But I know if I want to grow and I want it to be as big as I want it to be, I'm going to need this. So it's also a course requirement, but it's a piece of knowledge that I, I need to know that I want to know. For sure. Awesome. Very cool, David. So tell so tell me what kind of what kind of business is the LLC? Um, I run a uh, moving company. Oh, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so we'll be, we'll definitely talk a lot about service businesses like moving companies. Right. Uh, and and what I'll do is, um, uh, you know, based off of your experience, we'll we'll talk about examples of right. of how the accounting applies to a moving company or, okay. uh, or to a restaurant, things like that. Because we will talk about service businesses, we'll also talk about retailers, and right. we'll talk about manufacturers. Okay. And so we'll definitely make some some really good connections on positive. Okay. Very cool. Thank you, David. And uh, I, I'm I'm Thank sure you. I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it, and it'll definitely help yeah, you. I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I do, and I really want to see how I can apply, it, like you say, to everyday life as far as running a service business. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of example work on that as well. So right. very cool. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. The, uh, next I have on my list is Anitan. Hi, everyone. My name is Anitan. Um, my major is business administration. I'm taking this class again because I failed it. <laughs> uh, what I hope to learn from this class is to pass and I guess understand accounting more. It's kind of hard, like learning accounting through online, like sure. Um, but I hope I, I don't know what I was doing last semester, so I just hope I pass the class and I know what accounting is about. To be honest. Got you. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, information with us, Anitan, and and I will say the best way to pass this course is to ensure that you do all of the homework on time. That is 
by far the biggest reason why anyone would fail this course. If you don't do the homework, if you don't do it on time, you'll for sure fail. So please uh, make sure you do the homework on time every week. It's intense. It's eight weeks. Uh, there's two assignments per week. So what does that mean? Get started early. Start today. Uh, take your time with it, but at the same time, be on time, right? Uh, if you just do that, I promise you'll pass, you know, uh, and we'll talk We'll talk more about that when we get to the syllabus, but we'll get you through this in E-Town, I promise, uh, you know, and if you ever run into trouble, you let me know right away, and, and we'll we'll get you back on track, okay? And I, I appreciate you. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, next I have on my list is Erica. Hi, my name is Erica. Um, I'm taking this class because it's part of my major um, as well, and I want to get more in depth with accounting, um, how I can use it in my everyday life, and how I can use it um, in my current job field at the moment. So my the clients that I deal with on a daily basis. Fantastic. So, so, so Erica, what uh, uh, what what industry are you working in now? Um, so I'm a bank teller at Centrals. Got it. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely see a lot of connections between the types of transactions that we perform to um, be able to provide uh, uh, that type of knowledge to your to your clients, and mm -hmm. you'll also see a lot of um, investment decisions that businesses make to also help your clients. And I th I think that um, this course will definitely serve as the foundation for your degree, and. Uh, You'll you'll quickly notice a lot of uh, connections to your career uh, through this this course and also two hundred two. So uh, um, yeah, I think you'll like it. And uh, as long as you stick with us, you'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate you. Uh, next, I have is Gladys. Hello, Professor. Hello, everyone. Hi, Gladys. Um. So what I um, expect or what I want to gain from this class is um, experience, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. like I really want to apply it to my daily life. Um, currently, I'm working at Five Guys, but I also want to look like, how do I say it? Like, career-wise, like, I want to have ideas of where I can use it. Where I can use accounting, not just like in banks and stuff like that, more like in other fields, but I'm not sure what. So, sure. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Gladys. And and I'll I'll tell you this much: you'll find that um, that accounting is in every single business on the planet, and I mean every single business. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a small LLC or you're a Fortune 500 conglomerate style company. It doesn't matter. Every single business has accounting. And what do we mean by that? Well, every business records transactions. Every business has to track their expenses and their revenue. Every business needs to know if they're making a profit. So you will find that accounting is in every business. And so I think that'll really help you uh, as you begin to explore your options. And as you uh, start to explore uh, career options, I, I think it'll definitely help. So thank you, Gladys. I, I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. And it's nice to meet you. Same here. Next I have is Jessica Perez. Hello. Hi. Um, so I got into this course because I want to learn more. Um, cause right now it's, it's like being a trend of like investing and, and, um, you know, making your money work for mm -hmm. you so you don't have to. And I want to do like all this stuff for my future without committing fraud so i just want to learn the basics and like 
now I kind of regret not registering for the second part of this class, but it's okay. I do it next semester. Um, and yeah, just I want this class to like help me in the future, so I don't end up homeless. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Jessica, I, to- I totally agree with you. I think that um, when when you learn to properly record transactions, you'll be able to avoid avoid any type of fraudulent um, activity. Because oftentimes, what we find is that fraud is not something that people purposely commit. It's usually done by accident. And so, uh, if you know how to properly record transactions and to to keep better books, as they say, um, that is something that we can definitely avoid. And and we will learn more about that in uh, in future chapters. So I appreciate you bringing that up, and uh, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. you. The next I have on my list is Lysaya. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Lasaya. I'm a mortuary science major, and I'm taking this course because I want to learn more about how to manage my money in my business. And yeah. Awesome. Very cool, Lasaya. I appreciate that, and uh, welcome again to the class. I uh, you'll for sure be able to. Uh, be more efficient at managing your finances for, for yourself and for your business uh, as we explore uh, the concepts of budgeting, tracking uh, revenue and expenses, and also how to make better decisions uh, for, for the business. So I, I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, Lynette. Lynette, you're up. <laughs> It's all right. Make sure you unmute yourself. You're on mute, Lynette. Okay, there so you go. You I can hear you now. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynette Campbell, and I am in this class for empowerment. Um, knowledge is power. Account- accounting is a business and power to you, and it powers the business that you work for. Um, and as a person, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur. So, um, where I'm trying to go, of course, I will have to hang accounting over, but it will also help me to be able to, how can I say, keep track over my account. It can save me anything because I myself know that what we have to do is start my business. Awesome. Thank you, Lynette. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a lot. That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so based off of your experiences and based off of what you what you kind you you obviously have some perceptions already, which is fantastic. I think that um, what you'll be able to pull from this course is uh, of course, better record keeping. You'll be able to track everything a little bit more clearly. I think that um, your experiences so far, I think you'll be able to really relate to the course. I think that you'll be able to establish those connections. And overall, I, th- I think that um, I think that for yourself and for your business growth, uh, it, this course is definitely going to be beneficial. So um, 
I think you'll look forward to it. Uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of our interactions. So I, th I think we're going to have a good time. So I appreciate everything you said, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to working with you. Thank you. Next I have on my list is McKee. McKee? Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm sorry. Uh, this is McKay. McKay. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. So, but uh, good morning, everybody. My name is McKay McClam. I'm a hospitality major. And uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm I, it's a credit requirement, but I want uh, what I want to get out of this course is to become is to be more financially independent, because I notice when you know accounting, you you require less help with your own finances, and me as a person knowing what I want to do, I'm not trying to be rich. I just want to be able to live comfortably. And yeah. for my future generations and my kids and all that to be straight when I'm gone. So I just want to know, be able to learn accounting, being a person as as being a person as if like I have a job and I have my own LLC. So I want to know accounting basically to keep track of my funds and my multiple incomes in the future. That's what I hope to get out of this course. Yeah, Mackay, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, I That is something that I believe that everyone should be uh, co uh, conscious of. Being financially independent or, or at least being able to, at minimum, manage your own funds for, for yourself and for your business, super critical. Uh, you know, even when I started out owning a business, I hated accounting. I thought it was like the the worst thing ever. I, I I thought it was super boring. I didn't like you know having to record all the transactions all the time. And but then I started re, uh, realizing the importance behind it. Just like you said, Mackay is um, is if you can do it yourself instead of having to rely on an accountant or or a financial advisor or whatever, mm -hmm. you're taking control of your own destiny at that point. And that is something I, I I totally agree with. I think it's a wonderful thing that you said that, and um, I'm sure you'll. I, I'm very confident that you'll be able to get a lot of that from this course. And and as long as you uh, work with us and we, and you know we work through the principles together, and you you have a really good understanding of it, Mackay, you, you'll you're definitely gonna you're on your way to financial independence for sure. But I, I really appreciate you saying that. That's fantastic. Thank, no thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Next I have on my list is Michael. Good morning, Dr. B and class. Um, I, I go by Mike or James. I have two first names. They entertain. Either one works. But um, what I hope to, to gain out of this course uh, besides the credential, for the future, I just want to—I just want the knowledge that I that I obtain to be considered expertise instead of an opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Mike. Uh, I, Mike, I totally agree with you. I, I, I think being having that credibility behind what you're what you're doing and what you're saying super important because it it validates what you're doing, right? And and for for a lot of us, that's really important. So, Mike, I appreciate you sharing, and uh, welcome to the class. I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Pavle, you're up, my friend. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Pavle Pavloik. Uh, you can, I mean, if somebody cannot pronounce Pavle, they can call me Pav, or, or, or I'm, I'm good with everyone. So. Uh, I'm looking for uh, to get a knowledge of like basic uh, uh, accountant, uh, especially because we have here um, uh, we have company here that is news uh, news in small independent news uh, publication, and I want to help my sister like uh, to to know what we are doing, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that is that is my that I'm waiting, that I'm expecting from this class to learn a little bit, actually more than like, than, than uh, basic things. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely, Pavle. And uh, I think that uh, you'll be able to definitely learn 
more about that concept of of helping to manage the business from a financial perspective, and, which will help you to really get a gauge of how the business is performing when it comes to profitability. You'll be able to benchmark the uh, business's performance over time. And uh, it, that's that's one thing that I think that this course really helps uh, for students who, who own businesses or are working with, with businesses to really understand is how, how the business, overall business is performing. And so uh, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our interactions because I think you'll be able to uh, share your experiences with the class uh, as we as we move forward, because that'll help with the learning experience. Yeah, and as well, I'm also an international student. Originally, I'm from Serbia, but I live here in DC for like three years now, three and a half years. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Thank you, Pavel. We appreciate it. Uh, next I have on my list is Philip. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine, Phil. Uh, my name is uh, Philip, or I go by Phil. Um, what I'm interested in getting out of this course is, uh, I guess, knowledge. Uh, the company I work for now, I work closely with the finance department, but um, I don't have any knowledge in accounting, and I would like to, at some point, transfer into that department if, you know, if I can. Yeah. Um, I, I handle checks and, and cash, and I just hand it over to them. And um, so I would like to, you know, gain that knowledge. Very cool, Phil. And 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 uh, one thing you'll learn is, you know, since since you are in the business of handling cash and uh, you know receiving it from customers and things like that, is you'll be able to understand how to apply that cash to their account and what it, what it means for that customer. So so that that's something that uh, I think you'll find interesting. And then once you have a gauge of of how all that works. It'll certainly help you to advance uh, and to move around in, in, within the field. So, so welcome again, Phil. I, we appreciate you sharing with us and looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have on my list is Regina. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Clay. My Good name morning. is Regina. Um, you can call me Gina or Regina. It really doesn't matter. I'm taking accountants one and two because, like everyone else said, it's a part of my requirement because I am a business major. I'm currently majoring in business administration. Someday, or a couple of years after I graduate, or even still be in college, I want to start my own business, maybe awesome. with clothing or shoes. Cool. Um. I don't really know much about accounting, but my only problem is uh, I'm not that great of a saver, and I want to learn how to, you know, make my money work for me. Sure. And that's about it. Awesome. Thank you, Regina. Uh, one thing one thing you'll notice uh, about this course is we do talk a lot about inventory. We'll talk about uh, retail uh, components, which is sounds like what you're trying to start up is kind of almost like a small retail business that selling, you know, jewelry, clothing, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, even even if you start on Etsy, you know, or one of those fun websites that are around these days. Uh, I th I think that would be a fantastic place to start. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I I know a young lady who was a student of mine here at UDC. She uh, went on after she graduated, or actually while she was still in uh, at UDC, she started a, a, a an Etsy shop on on the Etsy dot com website, and uh, she took that thing from from nothing to. Uh, she was making almost hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in revenue, and uh, I was very impressed with this young lady. She she took it, uh, uh, she, and it was just a, it started as a part time thing, and uh, it turned into a full time job. So, it, and that's very common, and I think that's a good place for you to start. In addition to that, uh, what you'll learn in this class is how do, how do we record uh, transactions in regard to retail businesses. And that's actually something we'll talk about today as well. So thank you. Wonderful. I, I appreciate you sharing, Regina, and uh, I wish you a lot of success in, the, in that endeavor. 
Uh, next I have on my list is Richard. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard. Uh, the reason I'm taking this course is because I think it's significant to the success of my career. Uh, I already own a business and have patients that I'll turn into reality. So this course will be of much help. Uh, besides, I love uh, re business, real estate, and I take it as a lifelong uh, undertaking. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Very cool, Richard. Uh, so so can, can you tell us a little bit more about the business? Uh, yes, it's uh, 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 it's a new venture that you started in 2020. Uh, it's an uh, e-commerce business based on Amazon FBA. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. And yes, uh, just just like what Regina will soon go through, what you're already experiencing, uh, you it, it'd be really cool if you all get together and talk a little bit about that. Um, I think that uh, this course will certainly help you when it comes to recording your transactions, especially being in a retail setting uh, type of business. Uh, I, I'm very confident that you'll look, you'll get a lot out of this course that'll help you to, to uh, keep very good records and also to create your income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, retained earnings reports, and, and to help you to better understand how your, how your business is performing year to year. So, so this will, this class will certainly help. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Very confident I will learn a lot. Yep. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next I have on my list is Chanel. Hello. Can you hear me? We well, can hear you, Chanel. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Chanel. Um, my uh, major is mortuary science. I do want to open up my own funeral home one day. So um, I'm very excited to just get new information from you in this accounting class. And yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Very cool, Chanel. And, and uh, yeah, so uh, just like a, f a few of you op getting ready to open your own business or thinking about opening your own business, or a few of you that already have one, uh, this class will certainly help you uh, in the long run. So welcome again. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. The next I have on my list is Tramika. Good morning, Professor. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. So um, I'm a business major. And uh, me and my sister, we actually plan on going into business together. Um, and I'm pretty much doing what she calls the boring part. And just, um, <laughs> I'll be handling like all the all the finances. So that's that's what we agreed on, and um, that's 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 what I'm hoping to to really get out this class. I've already passed personal finance, and I'm excited to you know to see what I can learn from you know the accounting part. Yeah, and this will be this will be this business side, Tramika. So you, what you learned in personal finance is, of course, more personal. Uh, right. In this course, for sure, the business part. And so, so let me ask you, Tamika, what, what kind of business is it? So it will be like a hair salon. Uh, well, pretty much like a beauty parlor. It wouldn't just be, you know, on hair. It'd be hair, nails, uh, wax. Pretty much girls can come and be girls and just get everything done. Right on. Very, very cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, and yes, you'll get a lot out of this course for sure. So I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm excited too. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, please don't let me butcher your name. Uh, yep, Cole. Yep, Cole. You're up. Hello, everyone. My name is Yep Cole, and I'm major in business administration. I'm taking this class because uh, it's a requirement for my major, and, uh, and also it can help me to manage my uh, money. I'm in a, a forex investment investor. Oh, uh, cool! For, uh, for an exchange market. That's awesome, Yep, Cole. Uh, yes, you will definitely, for sure. Uh, this class will definitely help you to manage the cash flow, and will also help to provide you with some guidance on on investment strategies. Yeah, that is very cool, Yep, Cole. I, I, uh, yeah, Forex, really interesting area for sure. And uh, 
it, you know, sometimes it's volatile, but most time it's pretty stable. So it's, that's good. That's a really interesting area. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Uh, I think, did we miss Nitisha? Nitisha, I th I, did we miss you? I think we did. Maybe yeah. you joined a little later. Nitisha? Yep, Nitisha. Um, yeah, my name is Nitisha or Tish. Um, my major is mortuary science. I plan to have my own funeral home one day. Awesome. Um, and I'm in the beginning stages of um, my fashion line and also makeup. I mean, I make up a facial care online. We're just in the testing product stages of that. Cool. Now. Um, so I would like to see what I can get out of the class. Very, very cool. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Natisha, for sharing. Uh, I think that this class will certainly, you'll be able to get definitely a lot out of it, especially, you know, go, going into business. Uh, it's something that you definitely need to understand is how, how do we record transactions? How do we manage our funds? How do we gauge whether our business is successful? And you'll be able to get a lot of that out of this course. So, so thank you so much. I, I appreciate you sharing, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so that's everyone. Uh, awesome. Very cool. So it sounds like we have a lot of entrepreneurs in our class. Um, we have a lot of individuals either opening their own business, working in their own business already, uh, or they're looking to advance their careers. It's so cool. I and uh, I, I commend all of you for taking this step to uh, taking this course, and also for the work that you're doing on your degree programs. I'm confident it will benefit you, because the stuff, the in information that you learn from this course and your other business courses, will certainly help you to advance in your career and also in your personal lives. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, okay, so it took uh, not, it wasn't too bad, right? <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the course. This is your course landing page. Uh, it looks very similar to what I, you're seeing right now. Uh, I'm going to actually enter the student view to show you uh, what it looks like from that perspective, hold on just a second. Uh, I'm going to enter the student view. And this is exactly what you see. Okay, so this is the home page. There are a couple of elements in the home page that I want to call your attention to. It is very, very important that you try to do this. We are in what we call Blackboard Ultra. This is a new learning environment platform for UDC. All of your courses will look just like this course going forward after the uh, spring semester ends. So starting in the summer semester, all of your courses will be in Blackboard Ultra. We are fortunate enough to be testing out Blackboard Ultra, <laughs> but I promise it it is it has the same functionality as the Blackboard program that you're used to. The difference is the way it looks and feels. It just looks and feels a little bit different. In my opinion, it's actually easier than uh, the older Blackboard version. The reason I say that is because of the way things are laid out. Here on the home screen, we have course content, and that is where everything lives. The first thing I need you to do, if you haven't already, is select this Blackboard Ultra orientation for students. And go, make sure you go through each component of the module. It will only take you about 15 minutes, uh, maybe an hour for if you really take your time, but it won't take you very long. Just, click, just go ahead and click on through. Uh, the reason why I want you to go through this is because this module, and you just keep selecting next, will help you to better understand how the classroom design looks and feels. 
It'll also teach you how to view your grades, how to respond to messages, how to interact with your classmates through discussions, things like that. It's all of the same stuff that you're used to uh, in Blackboard and your other courses. It's just positioned a little bit differently. So if you could, please make sure that you go through that. I recommend you do it today. It'll be nice and easy. It just kind of helps you to navigate uh, the look and feel of your class. Uh, it also teaches you how to track your performance, things like that. So please make sure you do that. It'll certainly help you. Uh, okay, so after you're done with the orientation, the next thing I want you to do is click on the Start Here. Click on Start Here, and the module will open up. Uh, you'll see a nice welcome message from me, uh, the course overview, course objectives, the syllabus, faculty information, office hours, uh, tech requirements. There really aren't m many of those. Of course, expectations, uh, and that's it for that module. Just go ahead, click the first one, uh, and then start clicking through, okay? Uh, this one's important, the course overview. This one shows you how your course is designed, discusses each component of the course, okay? Uh, so please, when you get an opportunity, make sure to go through that. So course overview, definite yes, please look at that. Course objectives, nice to look at. The syllabus, very, very important, the syllabus. So let's go ahead and take a look at the syllabus. You can open either of these. We have it in both a PDF or a Word document format. To open up the syllabus, you simply click on those three little buttons and select Download Original File. The syllabus opens up. Okay, so let's talk about it. Uh, at the top, this is us. We meet Tuesdays from 11 to 1.30 only. We only meet on WebEx Tuesdays, 11 to 1.30. Only on Tuesdays, 11 to 1.30. Thursdays, that's an opportunity for you to do your work, talk to me as you need. Um, it, I'll, I'll be around uh, on on the that Thursday as well. Uh, okay, so that's the class. Uh, my email address, brandon.schweitzer at udc.edu. I respond to emails very quickly. Why do I respond quickly? It goes right to my phone. Okay. So wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I usually quickly respond. It might take an hour or two sometimes, but for the most part, I, I quickly respond. My phone number, 410-805-1531. That is my cell phone. My cell phone. Okay. You can call, you can text. Uh, that's fine. Just make sure you tell me who you are <laughs> and what, what course section you're in if you decide to text me. So that way it'll help me to, to uh, accurately respond. When you do send me messages, please, please, please tell me what the issue is. <laughs> Don't just say, I need help, because I'm not going to know how to help you when you say that. Please say, I need help with question x on assignment x that will help me to better respond <laughs> right it's, otherwise it'll, it'll take a while so uh, when you communicate with me please try to respond as clearly as you possibly can tell me exactly what the problem is uh and that that'll help me to to help you office hours uh i am available on mondays wednesdays and fridays Mondays and Wednesdays, 11 to 3, Fridays, 10 to 2, by appointment. How do we make an appointment with me? Uh, when you go back to that link, I'm sorry, what am I doing? When you go back to the, oh, when you go back to this link here, oh, <laughs> uh, sometimes it acts a little silly when I'm, I'm in WebEx. It only acts silly because I'm trying to show you something. <laughs> Okay, come on. Blackboard acting all kinds of silly. Okay. Back into the class. Uh, when, you, when you need to set up office hours with me, and it could be about whatever. It could be about class issues. It could be about personal issues. It could be about the university issues, whatever. But whenever you need to set up office hours with me, just go ahead and select this office hours link. 
it'll bring you to this calendar. Click on 30 minute office hour session. And, and then after today, you'll be able to select a, a day and time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on, on those particular times. And, and it, it'll create a calendar for you and for me. And it's nice and easy to use. So please do uh, uh, do it that way. And of course, you can always email me in between or call me or whatever. I just want to let you know, you can always get a hold of me. It's not just I'm not like those other professors that are hard to get a hold of. I'm actually very easy to get a hold of. Okay, uh, we're going back to the course. This is accounting one. We're going to cover financial accounting concepts. Uh, please read this on your own time. I'm not going to waste your time today on this stuff. The textbook. We use the 14th edition of the textbook. Uh, your homework is on Cengage. Please, 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 please make sure you have access to the textbook and also have access to Cengage. The textbook is digital and so is Cengage. Everything's on Blackboard. All you need to do is select the, the textbook folder to access the textbook. If for whatever reason you cannot access the textbook or if you're having trouble accessing the textbook, let me know right away. I will be certainly um, uh, passing along that information on to uh, the bookstore manager. Uh, I, it's better that you tell me right away, so that way I can then contact the bookstore and tell them uh, what's happening, yes? Uh, so it, please try to access the textbook today. If you have trouble trying to access the textbook today, you can't access it or you can't access Cengage, notify me right away. Send me an email. I will pass that information along to the bookstore manager and I will have that issue resolved for you this week within the next few days. Okay, are we clear on that? Yes. Sir. Yes, Wonderful. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to access um, yesterday and I'm going to the date. So my question to you is, you already ordered for us? I'm, I'm sorry, Lynette. I have a question. So you already ordered for um, all my textbooks for us in the house. You should be able to get my phone for I tried to have, I tried to get access yesterday. And um, I was unable. And what they gave me all my access for is an access code. I did yeah. the free trial. I did the free trial. So gotcha. um, my question is, you did. You're going to contact the bookstore. Did you already ordered the book for us? Yes. Free. Oh, you did. Yep. So, 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 Lynette. So, so the way it works is that um, unless, for whatever reason, you opted out of the Follett Access Program, you'll have <laughs> access to that book um, because you've already paid for it. Uh, the the, the follow all access program that that is sponsored by the bookstore. Yeah. If you are in that program, you have access to the textbook already. Uh, it uh, it should not ask you for a code. Uh, if it does, that's when you need to contact me and let me know that that's what's happening, okay. and I'll contact the bookstore manager. I'm so, I'm sorry, Lynette. No, I was I was just saying that on my part. I'm not showing anyone else in the class. It is still asking me for an access code, so that's why I did I did the free gotcha. trial. And I was about to order the book, and I was about to order the book, and I was about to order the book this morning. Yeah, so I did the free gotcha. trial, and I was about to order the book this morning. Yeah, so don't, don't, yeah, don't do that if you're if you're in the uh, follow all access program, because uh, that yes, means because I mean, you already paid for it. So so if if you are in the uh, follow at all access program. And it's asking you for a code. Email me. I will get that resolved right away. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Of course, yeah, it's the same thing happened last same stuff with me. They sent me a book, and they asked me uh, uh, to enter the code, but there was the uh, the last edition they want to, but they sent me the older one, and nobody tried to help me out. I, I emailed the manager, the bookstore manager, and the assistant manager over there. But nobody say nobody <laughs> responded. They're not, they're not, yeah. They didn't say my uh, code 
I told the prophet, and the prophet said, tell me to contact the the, the, the Scott King. Scott Scott King. Yeah, Scott King. Yep, he he's yeah. he's the director. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, they didn't, they didn't, I mean, if they, if, if if that happened again, what's the what's the option that we have? We have. To that's make? that's why you got to talk to me because I, I'll because I'll I when I reach out to the bookstore directly. I have I have the other contact information that most people don't have, so just talk to me, and I I will personally call uh, contact the bookstore manager and have the issue resolved. Um, and they, they seem to be, for some reason they seem to be responsive to me, so <laughs> uh, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. So I have a question, Professor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I start yesterday free trial. I mean, I have all access. Oh, okay. So but they ask like for like code. I start free trial. Uh huh. So probably I don't know. But now when I'm going, I don't see the chapters. I only see that uh, that you have that you put like a chapter two homework. Yep. Like assignments. I don't see where can I like read chapters. Yep. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the truth, professor. It yep. takes you straight to the assignments. Got it. Yep. So, 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 what you need to do is uh, up at the top. You do you see a, a button that says Study Tools? Can I share my screen with you, Professor? Yep. All right. Hold on just a second. Let me see. Yes, I see Study Tools. Yep. So, so when you, when you access the homework and you see the you see Chapter Two, Chapter, you know, there's like three other ones, right? So, what you need to do is up at the top. You see the button that says Study Tools. You select that, and then. Where? You, you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yep. You see that button on the top right says study tools? In the top right, top right. Yep. It says okay. assignments, grade, study tools. Yeah. Click study tools. Okay. Click on ebook. Ebook. Yep. And there's your book. Well, as soon as it loads. <laughs> okay. There's your book. And how do I access it? Just click on it. Or yep. Yep. You just you, you know X. You click that uh, little X, and then and then that your the book is open. You all you do is click on the, the various chapters. Yeah. Okay. Now. Okay. Now it look like the thing that I'm familiar with when you book. Okay. Got you. Okay. Cool. Wonderful. All right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take back my screen. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm not the broadcast. Hey. No worries. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, and, and again, if you have trouble, just let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to walk you through it. But yes, make sure that you have access to the textbook. Make sure you have access to the homework. As long as the homework opens up, that means that you have access to the textbook. To access the textbook, just select on that, uh, uh, the tools, more tools or whatever it's called, and then, and then select uh, e-textbook. It's there. I can't report. I'm sorry? So I have a quick question. Yes, please. So last semester, I used uh, Sans Engage too for principal of accounting. Do I still have to? Do I have to uh, pay for that again? No, no, you shouldn't. No. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't have to. So when I go to Sans Engage, it would just automatically just add your add your class. Your class it, would just pop. That's up. right. Yep. Oh, okay. it, but it should automatically be there. So, so what I recommend that you do is just make sure you access it through Blackboard. Okay, and all the homework are always on Sans Engage, right? That's right. Okay. Yep. Good question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, so let's move forward. If, if you have any other questions about the textbook, just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to resolve it for you. Okay. Uh, moving down. Nice optional stuff. Yeah, that's great. Okay. The important stuff, right? <laughs> Here we go. How is my grade evaluated? Well, here's how it works. Here's the breakdown. We have a total of three discussion boards. They are worth a total of five points each for a total of 15 points. You're thinking to yourself, oh, five points, you know, that's not a lot. It is a lot. Why is five points a lot? Who, who wants to answer that question? Why is five points a lot? Yeah, is it? It's 5% of your grade. <laughs> and that 5% may be the difference between you having a D or C or you got it. F or D. Yes, yes, 100% correct. A 5% of your grade. 
Each ass homework assignment and discussion board is worth 5% of your grade. Okay, oh my goodness, yes. So what does that mean? So uh, 5%. If you decide, oh, you know what, I'm not going to do that uh, chapter 4 discussion board. No, 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 don't do that. Do the discussion board. It's worth 5%. Okay, now when you're in discussion boards, here's what I'm expecting of you. One full, a minimum, one full paragraph, minimum, should really be two, yeah? Two full paragraphs with citations and references. That's your first initial post. Then you need to respond to two of your classmates. And it's not just a, oh, that's nice, oh, that's good, I agree, blah, blah, blah. No, that don't work. You need, the responses to your classmates need to be a full paragraph minimum with citations and references. That'll earn you the full five points. That's discussion boards. We also have homework assignments. Those are the Cengage homework assignments. There's four of them. They're also worth four, five points each. Here's the good news about homework assignments. You can take them as many times as you want. Okay? As many times as you want. Unlimited tries on homework. Well, yeah, that's cool, right? Okay, so, so homework, unlimited tries. But it needs to be done on time. It needs to be done on time. Otherwise, yeah, it's not good. You won't earn any points. So, uh, chapter two, which is due this Sunday night. Your first Sengage assignment is due this Sunday night. So, make sure you have access to Sengage. Make, su make sure you access to the homework and to the book. Chapter two is due Sunday night. Okay. Wait, so, sorry, so when is chapter one due? Chapter one is also due Sunday night. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so each, since the class is only eight weeks long, that means you have two chapter assignments due every week, Sunday night, of that respective week. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. But thank you for the question. I appreciate that. Uh, so four homework assignments in Sengage. First one's due Sunday night, chapter two. Please make sure you have access. Seven quizzes total. Seven quizzes. There are seven quizzes for seven different chapters. Also, five points each. For a total of 35 points. Oh, oh my. Yeah, it's a, that's a big portion. Of your, that's 35% of your grade. It's huge. Five points each. Okay, good news for the quizzes. You could take the quiz, each quiz, up to two times. Two times per quiz. Okay? So if you take... Chapter 1 quiz, which is due this Sunday night. If you take Chapter 1 quiz due this Sunday night, uh, and you don't do so well, as long as it's done by Sunday night, you can take it again. You can take it a second time to try to earn a higher score. So homework, unlimited times. Quizzes, two times. You've got two chances on quizzes. Uh... Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay, and then, of course, we have a midterm exam and a final exam. The midterm exam covers chapters 1 through 8. It's worth a uh, total of 10 points. That can only be taken once. Okay, exams can only be taken once. The questions are randomized as well as the answers are randomized. Uh, it can only be taken once with a total of 10 points for the midterm. Cover chapters one through eight. You'll you'll have the opportunity to take that at the end of week four is when the midterm is. End of week four. Final exam uh, covers chapters nine through fourteen worth a total of twenty points. Can only be taken once. That's at the end of the course. End of week eight. End of week eight. Okay. Uh, here's how the breakdown, 90 through 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, anything below that is failing. You need to earn a C or, or higher for this course to pass. Okay. Now, very important part of the syllabus, the schedule. <laughs> when is stuff due? Module 1, week 1, 
week one, chapter one, chapter two. Chapter one and chapter two is what we're covering today. Chapter one, you have a dis- uh, you have a um, well, it's actually just an introduction dis- uh, discussion board and a chapter one quiz. Introduction, chapter one quiz. I don't know why it says chapter that that does that's not there. Okay, ignore that part. Introduction, chapter one quiz. Introduction is not graded, but it's helpful that you do it. Okay, the chapter one quiz definitely graded. <laughs> okay, so this Sunday night you have chapter one quiz and chapter two homework. Chapter one quiz, chapter two homework. Chapter one quiz found in Blackboard. Chapter two homework found on SunGage. Also through Blackboard, though, you access it through Blackboard to get to SunGage. So Chapter 1 quiz, Chapter 2 homework due by this Sunday night. Next week, uh, you'll have Chapter 3 quiz, Chapter 4 homework. The following week, Week 3, you'll have Chapter 5 quiz, Chapter 6 homework. You see the pattern, right? Uh, Week 4, Chapter 7 discussion board, Chapter 8 quiz, and then you'll have your midterm exam. Week 5, 9 and 10, week 6, 11 and 12, week 7, 13, 14, week 8, final exam. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. You have two things to do every single week. Okay, so this is critical that you stay on top of the work. This is a very busy course. We have two things to do every single week. So as long as you are in the Blackboard classroom frequently and you're doing the work on time, you'll probably pass the course. It's a matter of doing the work. You do the work, you do the work on time, you'll pass the course. It's really that simple. It's just a matter of applying what you learned and you'll pass the course. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. But it's a lot. It's two things every single week, two chapters every single week. The rest of this stuff is all the legal stuff. I'm not going to read through all of that junk. Uh, Just make sure that you are aware of it. Academic integrity policy. I do need to call attention to this. Cheating is not tolerated in any sense of the word. Uh, And that includes on quizzes, tests, exams, um, discussion boards, all of that stuff. Discussion boards, yes, I check for plagiarism. Absolutely. That's why it's important that you use citations and references. Uh, if quizzes and exams, the questions are randomized. No student, no two students taking the exam at the same time will ever have the same question at the same time. So please, just avoid any of that nonsense. Don't help each other with exams or quizzes. That's not going to fly. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure you're all aware of that. That's the syllabus. It's in the classroom. Please read it on your time Uh, and consult it when you need to. The other good thing is um, in the the Blackboard classroom, there's this little button that says it's up at the top right. Next to content, it says calendar. The calendar, uh, if you click on due dates, tells you exactly what's due and when. What's due and when? Professor? Yes. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but I don't see where it says, like, discussion board for your course. Discussion board for your course? Um, what do you mean? It is in uh, week one, model one. Yep, yep, exactly. It's in week one. So, so, uh, And I'll show you exactly how to access that next. Thank you so much for bringing that up. So that was the syllabus. Uh, faculty information, click on that. You'll be able to get my email address and phone number. Uh, office hours, you can schedule office hours with me by clicking on that link. That'll be active after today. Uh, the rest of the stuff, just read through that. Two other important buttons to be uh, to understand. WebEx, you click on WebEx. That's how you access these sessions. That's how you access the session we're in right now. Uh Click on, uh, when you click on textbook, that's how you access your textbook. That first link opens up, should open up the homework assignments. If it does, that means you already have access to the textbook. You'll be able to select, uh, you'll be able to select uh, more tools and then be able to click on the e-textbook. 
These other links are here for your support. If you need tech support through Cengage, link is there. Uh, all of that good stuff. Okay, that's the textbook. Now, the important stuff. Well, to access the first weeks, click on this one that says Module 1. Open up Module 1. Each module has two weeks of content. Right now, we're in week one. This is the first week of the semester. Click on week one. You'll see a couple of things here. Under week one, you'll have chapters one and chapter two. Chapter one, when you click on this chapter one button, let, oh, this is so cool. Watch this. <clears throat> you'll have your learning objectives for chapter one. Below that, a lot of really good short videos. I'm a visual learner. I like visual learning. Uh, th these are really good series of short videos for each individual topic covered in the chapter. So feel free to watch those. I think they're really helpful. It's just my opinion. <clears throat> and of course, join our sessions. What do we need to do for chapter one? We have our introduction discussion board and the quiz. So how do I access the discussion board, you asked? You click on the discussion board under week one. Introductions, that's where we're at. Uh, the PowerPoints, I uploaded the PowerPoints that we cover in our sessions. Chapter one, PowerPoint, chapter two, PowerPoint. The, the quiz, how do I access the quiz? Quiz is right here under week one. You select chapter one quiz. The quiz will open up. You click on view questions, and then you rock and roll. You answer your questions. Nice and easy. Remember, quiz, quizzes can be taken up to two times. If you're not satisfied with your grade the first time around, you can take it again. How many times does that you say? Two? Two. Yep, that's right, Lynette. Uh, okay. two, t two times for quizzes, unlimited for homework. Okay. I was worried because I clicked on it. Um, yesterday and it is says two attempts left and I thought from me clicking on it I took away one of my attempts but I did not. It's you okay. <laughs> got you. No no worries there. That's, see the homework on okay. Cengage? Yep, homework is on Cengage. How do I access homework on Cengage? <clears throat> After you so chapter two homework is on Cengage. You just when you open up week one under module one, click on chapter two homework. It opens it up in Cengage. Assignments, Chapter 2, Homework is ready. Click Start Assignment now, and you'll be able to take the assignment. Good so far? Thank you. And each week is designed the same exact way. So week 2, when we, when we meet again on, uh, next week, here's week 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4. Very, same stru very similar structure. Very similar structure. Nice and easy. Each week's designed the same way. So please take some time, explore the classroom. And then that's it. Nice and easy. Okay, so any questions before we start Chapter 1? Chapter 1 will be relatively quick. We'll spend a little bit of time toward the end of Chapter 1. And we'll definitely spend a lot of time on Chapter 2. Questions? Are we okay? Um, I had a question. I, just, I was going to wait to the um, end of class before you just, well, after you dismiss everybody. Oh. If that's what I would do. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to um, open up my PowerPoint presentation for chapter one. It, for those of you following along at home, if you wanted to also have the same PowerPoint presentation open, all you need to do is click on module one, week one, chapter one PowerPoint. It'll automatically download to your device and you'll be able to open it. Oh, uh, one last thing. I, for those of you who are using your cell phone devices or other portable device to access the class, uh, UDC has an app. Uh, UDC has an app. Download the UDC app. It's really useful because um, you'll be able to access Blackboard right through there, and you can access the classroom right through there. It's really, really cool. Just That's just my two cents. I like apps. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started chapter one. 
I'm going to breeze through some of this stuff because I think it's very uh, mundane. Uh, some stuff, when I breeze through stuff, that means it's really easy, right? Uh, I'm going to spend time that I think is a little bit more important for you to understand on certain items. Okay, so chapter one, introduction to, to accounting and business. Uh, most of you uh, probably already went through uh, introduction to business. If not, you're probably in that class now. Uh, it is a prerequisite for accounting 202 or a co-requisite in some cases. Uh, so chapter one is very similar to what you, you are learning or will learn about in, in uh, introduction to business. Toward the end of the chapter is one, I'll spend a little bit more time on a couple items. Okay, <clears throat> what is a business? A business is an organization that uses resources like materials, labor, inventory, things like that to sell to customers. Some of you mentioned that you have a business already and you sell products to customers. Some of you have a service business, service business, where you provide services to customers. It's still a business. Whether you're selling a service or a product, it's a business. What is profit? Profit is the difference between your revenue and your expenses. Profit is the difference between your revenue and your expenses. Revenue minus expenses equals gross profit. Revenue minus expenses equals, equals gross profit. Profit is the difference between revenue and expenses. Don't worry, we'll talk about revenue. We'll talk about expenses in detail. Okay, so earlier we mentioned service business, merchandise business, fact, uh, manufacturing business. Uh, and, oh, and I'll also say, if you ever have a question, just tell me your mic and ask the question. It's okay. Uh, types of businesses. Service businesses are provide services to customers. They're not tangible. Tangible means you can physically touch it. I can physically touch this coffee mug. This coffee mug is a product. Okay? I cannot physically touch Delta Airlines. I cannot physically touch Walt Disney Company. Those are services. A, a service business includes things like doctors, lawyers, accountants, um, consulting services. Those are all service businesses. Delta Airlines is a transportation service. Walt Disney is an entertainment service. <clears throat> Merchandising businesses. Merchandising businesses provide products. Provide products. This is a coffee mug. I, I bought this at Starbucks. Starbucks provides product. They provide coffee and they provide merchandise. Walmart provides general merchandise. Amazon provides general merchandise. These are physical products that you purchase from those companies. So when you hear the word merchandise, think of a physical product that you can buy that's what merchandise is. Manufacturing. Manufacturing businesses are companies that actually make the merchandise. They produce, they manufacture the merchandise that you buy. An example would be Ford Motor Company, Honda, um, Merck, they make pharmaceutical drugs. Any company that makes the product, they physically make the product, that's a manufacturing business. And So for this course, we're going to focus a lot on service businesses and merchandising businesses. In Accounting 202, we're going to focus heavily on manufacturing businesses. What is accounting? A lot of people will define accounting as the language of business. The language of business. That's what accounting is. Why do they call it that? Because the language of business includes talking about information 
that is generated by economic activity of that business. We talk about sales, we talk about expenses, we talk about profit, we talk about cash flow, balance sheet, assets, liabilities, equity. When you hear these terms, we're talking about accounting. It's, that's why we call accounting the language of business. Every business speaks it. It's, it kind of is like a foreign language. It's very similar. It's, it includes uh, accounting information for the business. Helps us to identify if the business is profitable. That's what accounting is. The purpose of providing accounting information helps us to identify users, assess users' information needs, design accounting information systems to meet those needs, record economic data, and prepare accounting reports for users. All this is real fancy talk for saying we created a system that provides information to you, the business owner, or to you, the business manager, when you need that information. Or if you're an investor, or if you're selling Forex uh, on, on open exchanges, you need accounting information to help you to understand whether the investments you're making are the right ones. How do I do that? The accounting information system provides data for the users. Users are different. For financial accounting, which is what this course focuses on, our users are uh, individual business owners, investors, the government, uh, the general public, anyone who's interested in your business. Those are the users of the data. They, uh, the information that your business generates to produce the income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, all of that information gets published, okay, and released. If you're publicly traded, if your business is publicly traded on the stock exchange, on the stock market, your business is your information is publicly available. It's available through the sec.gov website, Securities Exchange Commission. You can find information about any publicly traded company on the Securities Exchange Commission website. Uh, what more can I tell you about that? We'll talk more about this concept, but just know that when we talk about Accounting 201, financial accounting, we're talking about the development of the financial statements to be prepared for the users. And we'll talk more about that as we go forward. So this is a kind of a visual representation of the accounting system. We figure out who the users are, we assess their needs, we create the accounting system, we record the, the transactions, and we prepare the accounting reports. The accounting reports are shared with both internal and external uh, users. We'll talk more about that. Managerial accounting. Managerial accounting is 202. That's what we're going to learn in accounting 202. But what is it? A, a, inter, a managerial accounting, we're focused with only the internal users. Internal users are people that work within the company. They make decisions. The type of reports that we produce in managerial accounting are for internal users only to make decisions. And that type of information is not publicly made available. For example, if I'm purchasing some inventory for my company, I'm not going to tell my customers how much I bought it for. <laughs> that's silly, right? I'm not going, I'm, that's private information. That's managerial accounting. We'll talk more about that as we go forward. Financial accounting, which is what this course is concerned with, is to provide information to our users outside of the business, like investors, creditors, customers, and government. The purpose of financial statements is to help you, the manager, understand your company's financial condition. Okay. 
a lot of coffee, water. Uh, okay. One important thing I'll need to talk about, and I'm, we're not going to spend too much time on this part, but ethics. Ethics is super, super important, especially when we're talking about anything with money. Ethics are moral principles that guide your judgment, that guide your behavior. That's what ethics are. It impacts everyone. We as managers, we as business owners need to act and behave ethically. We should never uh, betray our customers or anyone that works with us. What happens when we don't act ethically? We lose customers. We might lose the business. We might go to jail. So it's important that the information that we provide is accurate and transparent. A couple of things happened in the past that caused some really bad things, <laughs> which is what creates laws. There's this law that was created in 2002 called the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Sarbanes-Oxley Act, created in 2002. What it did is it was created because some of these companies behaved unethically. They betrayed their investors. They overstated and understated facts on their accounting statements. Enron, classic example, I'm sure you've probably heard about it. It was a huge company in the late 90s early 2000s, they went bankrupt. Uh, why? Because they lied to their investors. They said that they were making more in sales than they actually were. That's illegal and immoral and unethical. They went bankrupt because of it. Uh, not only did they go bankrupt, a bunch of people went to jail. Some people were murdered. Some people lost their lives in that case. Uh, and, of course, all of the investors lost all of their investment. Yeah, that stuff happens. It's very unfortunate, but it does happen. Um, which is why the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was created, to prevent stuff like that from happening again. It creates transparency. It's important that we are transparent in our business. We provide Accurate, honest, transparent data for our users. It's important that you as an investor know that the information that you're receiving from the company is honest, accurate, transparent, and it's been audited by uh, third parties. So that's what happened. In, in, in those cases that I just showed you here, they were not honest. They were not uh, ethical. They were not transparent. They caused a lot of problems for investors. And that's what went wrong. It created failure uh, among individuals, and it created a, a culture of greed. Uh, if you ever watch a TV show, if, if any of you are interested in a, a TV show to watch that would be kind of related to this, there's a show called American Greed, and it's on uh, CNBC. It's a pretty good show. For those of you who are interested in, in that part of accounting. Okay, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley Act, I talked about it. What did it do? It created oversight for publicly traded companies. It provided independence, corporate responsibility, and disclosure. What it really did is it created transparency, honesty, integrity, audit ability, and overall trust for publicly traded companies. That's what Sarbanes-Oxley Act did. How do you act ethically? Um, identify decision-making, why you're making decisions, do it fairly and honestly, consider the consequences, understand your obligations to others, and uh, who is being affected by your decision-making? 
That's what will help you to behave ethically when you're working in accounting. Okay, so that's ethics. Let's talk about opportunity. I like opportunity. Accounting is a very fast growing area. There are a, there we have a shortage in this country and probably around the world for that matter for accountants. We we are desperate. <laughs> accountants get paid pretty well. Why do they get paid so well? Because there's a shortage. There's not enough of them. That problem has been in existence for about 10 years now and growing. So that means there's a lot of opportunity, especially for you students who are looking for work in accounting. Guess what? There's a lot of opportunity out there for you. Uh, it's a fast growing area. There's a great need for accountants. You don't have to have a CPA to become an accountant. You don't. I don't have a CPA, but I was an accountant. Yes, I have a doctorate and yes, it's in accounting. But that's not why. That's not how I became an accountant. I just I started in accounts payable, moved to accounts receivable, moved to payroll, learned all the different aspects of accounting, and became an accountant. I didn't necessarily go to school for it. I didn't become a CPA. I learned the trade. I learned what accounting is. And for publicly traded companies, yes, you need to be a CPA. For private companies like LLCs, uh, you know, those of you who are, are own your own business, you don't need to be a CPA. You don't need to be a CPA. You just need to understand how accounting works. Um, but if you want to work in the public field, you need to be a CPA. Uh, this data is a little old. I think this is probably 2017 numbers. It's it's higher than this now. And this is not D.C. numbers. We all know D.C. a little bit higher than this. This is This is nationwide, yeah? Bookkeepers, 40,000. In D.C., it's more like 65. Payroll clerk, 40,000. D.C., it's more like 60. General accountant, 51. D.C., it's 75. Budget analyst, 53. D.C., it's more like 80. Cost accountant, 55. D.C., it's more like 100. Uh, revenue auditor, 62,000. It's more like 110 in D.C. I, IT auditor. Oh, man. 120 in D.C. Easy. And these are all private accounting jobs. Private. Small to medium-sized companies, not publicly traded. Yeah. Uh-huh. Publicly traded, it goes up from there. These are just to give you an idea of the different types of career paths to consider, uh, for, especially for those of you who have an interest in getting into accounting or you just want to get some more experience in that area, by all means, become a bookkeeper, payroll clerk, general accountant, budget analyst, cost accountant, auditor. Yes, those jobs are plentiful. There's a lot of them available. Uh, go to roberthalf.com. If you're interested in becoming a, uh, working in any of these roles, they, they have a ton of job boards on there. That's actually, I uh, worked with, um, I worked with a few people from there to get a few of my students' jobs. So, uh, Michael asked if anyone's having connection issues. Um, yeah, a little bit. It's it's a it's a little unstable, but that is unfortunately part of um, WebEx. I had the same problem yesterday, actually, with with my class last night. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so that's career paths. Let's talk about generally accepted accounting principles. Oh, super important. We're going to spend some time here. Okay, accounting principles. That's the name of the class you're in right now. Principles of Accounting 1. Uh, we will discuss accounting principles as outlined by the United States Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. We have several standards that we follow in accounting. These are assumptions and principles. Okay. The first one I want to talk about are accounting standards. 
These are rules that accounting is uh, that we live by in accounting. It helps us to determine accounting for individual business transactions. That's the rule that tells on the standards. They tell us how to record our transactions. It's a it's a governing rule. Yeah. It tells us that we first debit, then credit. We apply a debit to uh, an account and a credit to an account for every journal entering, for every transaction. We'll talk more about that. Don't worry. But the, the accounting standards, what governs that? Accounting principles and assumptions. This provides the framework for the standards. They tell us more about how we should be recording transactions uh, and, and what the impacts are on the financial statements. How, and it also tells us how financial statements need to be developed. You'll find that when you look at different um, companies, when you look at their financial statements, they're very similar. Every income statement has the uh, revenue, expense, uh, cost of goods sold, expenses, net income. They all have the same. Every balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and equity. Every statement of cash flows has operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. They're all structured the same way. Why is that the case? Because they are standardized. They behave accordingly to the standards uh, for generally accepted accounting principles. Here are a few governing bodies that govern the generally accepted accounting principle standards. Financial Accounting Standards Board, they set their responsibilities. Securities Exchange Commission, they tell us how the companies need to disclose their information for publicly traded companies. And for the International Accounting Standards Board, especially for international or multinational co companies, this governs the world as it relates to accounting. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of work around that uh, in present day. Because the world is shrinking, as we say. Okay, let's talk about characteristics Relevance and faithful transaction within um, reports. All reporting is relevant. It tells us the information about the company's overall health. It tells us about the impact on decision making. Faithful representation means that everything is accurate, transparent, and ref accurately reflects the economic activity or condition of the business. Or characteristics. Comparability. I can compare my retail, my small retail business on Amazon. I can compare my business to other small businesses on Amazon based off of performance. That means it's comparable. When something is verifiable or reports are verifiable, that means I, an external party can look at my financial statements and verify that they are correct. When something is timely, that means I've distributed my financial reports to the users on time in order for them to be able to make decisions. Yeah? Understandability. Financial reports are very clear, concise, to the point, and uh, facilitates interpretation and analysis. That's why I said earlier all the financial statements are laid out the same way to make it understandable. Let's talk about accounting assumptions. We assume a monetary unit. A monetary unit is the do U.S. dollar, the British pound, the euro, the 47 other currencies that there are around the world. Uh, we identify those. that is the monetary unit. A time period. Financial estate, uh, statements have time periods associated with them. I report my income statement every month. 
monthly is a time period. I report my balance sheet and my statement of cash flows every quarter. Every quarter. A quarter is a time period. Semi-annual and annual. So monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, and annual. Those are the time periods for financial statements. We'll talk more about that in later chapters. What is the business entity? Is it a sole proprietor? Is it a partnership? Is it an LLC? Is it a publicly traded company? And what is the going concern? Going concern means how long can the business operate for? And what are the hurdles in front of it? That's the going concern. We'll talk more about that. So again, monetary consumption. Uh, what is it? What is the monetary unit? Is it dollar? Is it pound? Is it euro? Is it whatever else, right? Provides a, a measurement of economic activity. We usually measure things in dollars. We will, at least in this course, especially since we're in the U.S. Time period. Again, is it reported monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual? Uh, at the end of every fiscal year, a publicly traded business will publish their financial reports. Fiscal year and natural business year, two different things. Fiscal year usually starts January 1, ends December 31. That's fiscal year. For the government, it's different. A government's fiscal year starts September uh, starts October 1st and September 31. That's the government. But fiscal year, January 1 to December 31. A natural business year. This is any 12 months. Like, for example, when I own my own business, I started my business. It started April 1st. It ended March 31st. That was my business calendar. Started April 1 and December, uh, uh, March 31, every single year. That was my business year. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't have to follow the, the, the uh, calendar, the, the natural calendar, I should say, or the normal calendar. Business entities assumption. What type of business is it? Uh, is it a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, LLC? Uh, and how is ownership viewed in the business? With sole proprietors, they don't have partners. They don't have to worry about answering to shareholders. In a publicly traded company, they have to answer to shareholders because shareholders are the ones that own the business. And it's concerned with owners, creditors, and other businesses. Excuse me, Professor. Yes, please. Is the business year determined by when when you open the business up? Yeah, typically. Yep. Uh, the, the natural business year is determined by when you started the business or incorporated it or filed your business license. That's typically this the be, the beginning of the net the natural business year, and then it'll end that at the end of the month before the month that it started. So if you started in April, April 1st is your uh, beginning of your natural business calendar. The end would be March 31st. Okay. Good question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and the reason why that's important is because of the way that we report our income statement, balance sheet statement of cash flows, and when we do our filing. That's that's why that's important. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Good question. Uh, okay, so sorry. yes, please. So, what if you don't have a like you start, but you don't have an income? Like yeah. in that kind of, what do you need to do? Like after one year? Nothing. Like, if you don't have if if, if, yeah. if you don't have any income to be reported, you don't have to do any filing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good question. We'll talk more about that soon as well. Uh. 70% of all businesses in the U.S. are sole proprietors, owned by one person. 10% of all businesses in the U.S. are partnerships. 90% of all businesses organized in the U.S. generate revenue. 20% do not, uh, or 10% do not. 
Uh, 20% of all businesses in the U.S. are recognized as corporations. That's not very many. People think that, oh, the U.S. is all big corporate business. It's not. It's not. V almost all business in the United States, those are small businesses. America was founded on small business, not big corporations. Don't, don't let the media fool you into believing that most people work for these big corporations. That's not true. We know that's not true. We don't work for big corporations. We work for small companies. Yeah. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, limit LLC. 10% of businesses in the United States are LLCs. LLCs are designed to help protect the business. Yeah. Going concern... Uh, how long the business can operate into the future. And that depends on cash flow and a lot of other measurements that we'll talk about. Okay, here we go. The principles. The, the principles, very, very important. Principles are designed to help us measure uh, the business performance. Uh, understand historical cost, recognize revenue, and recognize expenses. We're going to talk about these. The measurement principle of accounting determines the amount that will be recorded and reported. This is the amount of revenue and expenses that I can record and report. How much did I get from that customer? I record that as a revenue. How much did I pay for that bill? I record that as an expense. Measurement principle tells us the dollar amount that we can record, accurately uh, record. It's a transaction between two in independent parties is called arm's length transaction. Arm's length transaction. Historical cost principle, also as the cost principle. We record the amount uh, we received or paid when it happened. When it happened. Okay, so if, uh, or, or when, when the, that cost was incurred, what do I mean? So, okay, so we're in January. Uh, I just got my utility bill for gas that covers the month of December. What month do I record that bill in? I'm asking you. I just got my uh, gas bill. January. No. December. December. The reason why I record, that I received my gas bill uh, yesterday for the month of December. I record that bill in the month of December. The reason being is because according to the cost principle and the matching principle that we'll learn about, I need to make sure that I record my expenses when they were incurred, when it actually happened. So that way I can look historically and say, oh, for the month of December, my utilities were this much. For the, for the month of November, my utilities were this much. I record it in the month that it happened, not when I received the bill. I received the bill next month, but it's actually for this month. Uh, the reason why we do that is because we need to be accurate and record the expense when it happened, when it was incurred, not when we received it. The same principle applies for revenue, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But yes, the correct answer is December uh, to record that expense. What about revenue? Revenue is the amount that we receive from our customers for selling a good or service. Rev the revenue recognition principle tells us when we need to record that revenue. Normally, revenue is recorded when the services have been performed or the goods have been delivered. Okay, here's how it works. Let's say I have a small Amazon storefront, okay? 
if I have a small Amazon store or if I'm on Etsy or whatever, a customer buys a product from me. Yay, awesome. I don't record the revenue right away. I wait until I ship that product to the customer. Then I record it as revenue. Why? Because revenue is needs to be recognized when it's earned when it's earned it's revenue is only earned after you perform the service or after you sent that product to the customer that's when it's earned we record revenue when it's earned if we record revenue before it's earned it's actually a liability not revenue it becomes revenue when it's earned We'll talk more about that. But revenue is recorded when it's earned. Expenses. Expenses are the expenses that we are incurred to generate revenue. These are day-to-day -day expenses like rent, utilities, a mortgage, a car loan, um, fuel, office supplies, uh, you name it, right? Those are all expenses. And I use those expenses to generate revenue. How? I use my car to drive the inventory to the customer. That helps me generate revenue. I use my office space for clients. That helps me generate revenue. Those are expenses, but they help me to generate revenue. Expenses are recognized at the time they are incurred when the expense actually happens. We call this the matching principle. Call it the matching principle. So it, it, it also is incurred when I receive that related revenue. So if I have um, a gas bill that I received a few days ago, but it was for the month of December, I record it in the month of December. Why? Because it's related to the operations for that month. And the revenue I received in the month of December is matched to that expense. We're called the matching principle. This helps us to report the profit and loss, also known as the income statement. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I get your um I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Lynette, you're breaking out. Okay, can you hear me now? I can, yep. Okay, um, can you just help me with this? So when it comes to the financial um, aspect of, of the recording, yes, the, the bill came in December. It occurred in December, but my expenses for December or what I actually, the cash flow that was coming out did not go towards that bill because I didn't, I wasn't able to pay that bill until January right. once I received it after the fact. So right. when it comes to recording, how can I say now that I paid, um, how can I match my fin my financial um, sure. cash flow going out to December when it did not happen? Got it. I yep. mean, I'm here in January. You, you need to set my kind of confused. I, I totally understand what, what, what you're saying. So here's what you need to do. You need to separate that thought. Here's why. Cash flow has nothing to do with revenue. Cash flow has nothing to do with revenue. It has nothing to do with expenses. Cash flow is a totally separate area, totally separate subject. The physical cash that you receive from customers or you pay out in expenses is totally separate from when you recognize revenue and expenses. Totally separate. That's why, Lynette, that cash flow is has its own financial statement. It has its own financial statement. And we're going to talk more about that. But the, the cash flow, the physical cash flow, has nothing to do when you recognize revenue or expenses, 
Like, for example, but, Matt, I can make a sale to you from my Amazon store at the end of December, but you haven't paid me yet, and you pay me in January. I still recognize that sale for December because I I made the revenue. I recognize the revenue in December, although I haven't received the cash yet. You see what I'm saying? Oh, cool. Very cool. Well, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we're going to talk more about that as we go on. But if you don't, if you don't receive cash, you can can you like uh, say that that is like expense that you didn't like? Uh, no, because you didn't. No, you can't. no. So, so here's how that works. Uh, if I haven't received the cash yet, uh, it's it's still it's still considered revenue. It's just you haven't received the cash yet. It's that simple. You still made the sale, therefore it's still revenue. When you've made the sale and you've you sent the the product to the customer or you performed the service and you made the sale, it's revenue, regardless of whether you got the money or not. That's a whole separate issue. The the, the actual cash, it, it it becomes an asset when you receive it. But what if customer says that he never received the product product? If the customer never received the product, then we cannot classify it as revenue. At that point, it's an expense. It's a loss. Okay, lost. Yeah, that that was my word that I was. Okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Good question. Let's talk about expenses. Uh, or or did we already? Okay, so yeah, we did. All right, I'm sorry. Let's talk about the accounting equation. The accounting equation. This is where all things accounting start. The accounting equation is assets equals liability plus equity. The accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets are things that the company owns. We own it. My house or your house that you pay a mortgage on, you own that. That's an asset for you. It's an asset. Your car, if you own it, not leasing, leasing separate. Leasing is an expense. But if you own your car, you know, you pay a, a car loan or if, you, or if you just own it, you own it. That's an asset. If your business, if you have machinery, or a building, those are assets. Those are assets. Anything you, the business owns is an asset. The assets also include things like cash. Cash is an asset because I can use cash to generate revenue. Cash is an asset. Accounts receivable is an asset. Accounts receivable means I delivered the good to the customer. Customer hasn't paid me yet. It creates an account receivable. Account receivable. I expect to receive it. Accounts receivable means customer hasn't paid me yet. Customer will pay me. It's an accounts receivable. That's an asset because eventually you'll be able to turn that into cash. Uh, and then, of course, you have those are what we call short term assets as cash, accounts receivable. Then you have long term assets. Those are property, plant and equipment, property, plant and equipment. Those are all assets. What about liabilities, a liability is when the business owes someone money. We owe them. We owe W E them. Owe them. Sorry, my New York accent gets a little thick sometimes. We owe them money, okay? O, O W E. That's a liability. It, uh, accounts payable is a liability. Accounts payable is when I received my gas bill a few days ago. I haven't paid it yet. I enter it as an expense for December. I also enter it as an accounts payable. Because I haven't paid it yet. When I pay it later this month, I'll decrease my liability, my accounts payable, and I'll decrease my cash. 
to represent the payment of it. We'll talk more about that in, in the next few slides. Liability is something that we owe to someone else. A, a car loan, a mortgage, a payroll that we haven't paid out yet. Those are all liabilities. Anything that you owe to someone else is a liability. Anything the business owes to anyone else is a liability. A credit card, that's a liability. Uh, you know, things like that. Yep. Equity. Equity is the difference between assets and liabilities. That's equity. Equity is the difference between assets and liabilities. Equity it are the rights of the owner. The rights of the owner. Equity is the, the initial investment that you, the business owner, made into the business. That's equity. Equity is the initial investment that you, the business owner, made into the business. That is equity. Okay? Equity can be expressed in the form of shares, stocks. Uh, equity is also expressed as actual cash going into the business. Uh, I have a question about equity. Um, yeah, could yes, that count as like the percentage of the business, the business uh, that you own. So, like, if I own fifty percent equity, it's like I own half of the business. That's right. Yep, that's equity. So you own fifty percent to the business. So, so what, what, what that means is that, David, when the business goes out of business or you decide to close it for whatever reason or you're, you're retiring, um, you know, or whatever, you own the right to 50 percent of that business. So right. that's 50 percent of the liabilities and, and the and, assets. And the assets, right. It's both. Yep. Oh, you right. got it. Yes, sir. Yep. Very good. Cool. Okay, so again, the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, here's why it says equal, okay? The assets are equal to the liabilities plus the equity. If I have a um, uh, an accounts payable, I, I have a utility bill that I need to pay, my, my gas bill. When I pay my gas bill, I reduce my assets by that amount that I owe, and I also reduce my liability by the amount that I owe simultaneously, okay, at the same time. When I do that, the accounting equation is in balance. It's, it still balances. Assets still equal liabilities plus equity. When I receive cash from my customer after I've already sent them the good, I reduce my my accounts receivable, which is an asset, and I increase my cash, which is also an asset. I'm only affecting the asset side, but it still balances. I'm just moving it from one account to another, right? There's tons of examples we could give, but those are just two quick ones. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. This is the foundation of everything accounting. Every business transaction that, th that we have impacts two different accounts, okay? Every business transaction we have affects two different accounts. We call that double entry, okay? Double entry, accounting. Business transaction reflects a change in business operations and a change in financial condition. These changes are recorded as... Uh, uh, journal entries. They affect the accounting equation. For example, we purchased a piece of land for $50,000. When we purchase a piece of land for $50,000, we increase our land account, which is an asset, and we decrease our cash, which is also an asset. The accounting equation is still in balance. One of many examples. We'll talk more. Okay, here we go. Here's an example. On November 1st, we deposited $25,000 into our bank account in exchange for shares of common stock. When a company wants to raise funds, meaning we need more cash in the business, how do we do that? Let's sell part ownership of our business. 
The way we do that is by selling shares of stock, which are forms of ownership. So our company sold uh, shares of stock for $25,000, 25 shares, okay, or $25,000, whatever. We sold $25,000 worth of stock, okay? So when we did that, we increase our cash by 25000 which is an asset. And we also increase our stockholders' equity, which is an equity account. Okay, common stock by 25000 That's an equity account. We increase cash, 25000 We increase equity, 25000 We don't. There's nothing involved with liabilities here because it's just assets and equity. But you see the accounting equation is still in balance. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Liabilities is a zero. So assets, 25,000 equals zero plus 25,000 equity. Make sense? Good so far? Question. So it's basically different than regular equity, this, the stockholders' equity. Yeah, so, so stockholders equity is like uh, for, for stock. It's a common stock, preferred stock, which is different than, than initial investments. Yep. All right. <clears throat> That's why it's called stockholders equity. Otherwise, it would just be called um, owner's equity. Owner's equity are the direct owners. Right, right. And they have to be publicly owned companies in order to have stockholders equity. You can't have be an LLC and have stockholders equity, correct? That's correct. I have a question for this example. Yeah, please. Like, for this 20, like, say, let's say 25,000, do like from where we have this 25,000, do we need to like, you know, like uh, say it's my personal money or, or like, do we need to like report that? Like I cannot just bring from the street like 25,000 and put in my bank account. Well, that's, well, that's what happened. That's what happened in this example. We, we sold shares of the business. We sh we sold off part of the business, and that's how we got the twenty five thousand in our in our bank account because they had to pay us for the shares of the business. That so we increased uh, cash okay. twenty five thousand. Okay, 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 okay. Yep. Good question. Yep, good question. Yep. So common stock is what we would uh, issue shares of stock uh, to individuals that, that want to buy the business and, and you see that all the time on the on the uh, stock exchange okay uh here's another transaction november 5th we paid twenty thousand dollars for the purchase of new land we purchased some land okay so what happened we paid twenty thousand dollars which means we reduce our cash by twenty five thousand we bought a piece of land, so we increase our land account by twenty thousand. Twenty thousand minus cash. Land increases twenty thousand. You see, it still balances. Still balances. We went down in cash, but we went up in land. They're both asset accounts, so we only affect the one side of the of the equation. Well, you see, it still balances. Our first transaction, we had 25000 in stock. Second transaction, we bought some land. But you see the cash, uh, the new balance of cash is 5000 The balance of land is now twenty. That's still 25000 Your 25000 still equals 25000 As you work through the book, you'll see a lot of examples like this. It's, it's a pretty good book, in my opinion. And, of course, we'll talk a lot about those types of examples. Okay, transaction C. Do you have examples where the books are not balanced? I'm sorry? Do you have an example of where the book is not balanced? When do it become? It, it never becomes out of balance. If it does, there's a problem. Okay. If your so assets to come across. Yeah, so, so a book that's unbalanced. A book is unbalanced, that's a problem. Assets always equals liabilities plus equity. If it doesn't, there's a problem. And usually that problem is a result of um, either somebody recorded a transaction wrong or um, 
Somebody forgot to record like depreciation or some other closing entry. And we'll talk more about that in the future chapters. Okay. Yeah, good question. Third example, company purchased some supplies thir for thirteen fifty. agreed to play the supplier in the near future. In other words, I bought it on account. When I purchase something for the business, but I haven't paid the bill yet, we call that purchasing it on account. It creates what we call an accounts payable. Accounts payable is when we owe somebody money for something that we purchased, but haven't paid them yet. Creates an accounts payable. So eventually I'll pay them the thirteen fifty, but not yet. So I uh, debit my supplies to increase my supplies thirteen fifty. And I, deb, uh, I credit my accounts payable to increase my accounts payable by $13.50. Don't worry, we'll see more examples of that, but I just wanted to show you that one. Okay, here's another one. Business earns money by selling goods and cut our services to our customers. We call this revenue. We know that. Here's an example of a uh, revenue transaction. Our, co our company received cash of $7,500 for providing services to our customers. What do I do? I debit my cash to increase my cash, $7,500. And I debit my fees earned, also known as revenue, okay, $7,500. Fees earned is an equity account. Fees earned is an equity account. Revenue and expenses are equity accounts. We'll talk more about that when we, when we talk about the income statement. But fees, uh, revenue, and expenses are fall under equity. We'll talk more about that uh, in the near future. Uh, just like we talked about before, when we record revenue, we record it when we earn it. Uh, revenue for service businesses, for service business, you provide a service like a catering service or a, um, a you're an attorney, you are an accountant, you're uh, a doctor, you earn fees, you earn fees. So your revenue, we call it fees earned. If you sell merchandise, like if you sell on Etsy or you sell on Amazon, or you sell whatever, you're selling actual merchandise, we just call it sales. That's your version of revenue. If you own real estate, uh, like, you know, you rent apartments out. If you own apartment buildings, or you, you're building a community, like you said, if you're building a community and you're going to rent apartments out to, to your community, your revenue will be shown as rent revenue, rent revenue. Another example would be interest revenue. Interest revenue comes from you lent somebody money, they're paying you back plus interest. When you get the interest in, we call it interest revenue. Uh, most of the time you'll see that with banks. Banks will have a line item called interest revenue. Accounts receivable is a claim against the customer, meaning you provided the good or service, the customer has not yet paid you. When the customer has not yet paid you for a good or a service, we call that an account receivable. Okay. Instead of receiving cash at the time of good or a service, we may decide to accept the payment later. That's what creates the account receivable. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Assets used as part of earning revenue is called expenses. Another example of a transaction. Transaction, transaction, transaction. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to get through the rest of this as quickly as I can. Uh, equity. Okay, so a couple forms of equity. One's common stock, one's called retained earnings. Common stock is when we sell shares of ownership in our business to other individuals. It's called common stock. 
Retained earnings. Retained earnings is when we retain revenue in the business. That's retained earnings. That's when we keep revenue in the business from our sales. That's called retained earnings. Retained earnings. Yes, go ahead. Can a business have um, a savings account? When can they, um, I, I asked that when you just call a retained earnings. Or one account? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lynette, you're breaking up a little bit there. I can't, I can break it off. Um, the question came to mind when you mentioned retained earnings. Yes. I'm curious, can a business have a savings account? Or? Yeah. Absolutely. There's no such thing for it. they can't. Can, yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. but it, it we it's the same as cash. So mm -hmm. uh, so it, within your cash, you could have a checking account, savings account, other type of account. It's just cash. So it okay. it, it shows up on your balance sheet as cash. Good okay. question. Re retained earnings comes from uh, at, at the end of the year. After the the business closes their books at the end of the year, if there's a revenue that we generated, you know, revenue minus expenses, and we want to leave that money in the business to reinvest into the business, that's when we call it retained earnings. And we'll talk more about that. But yeah, good question. Okay. Let's talk about the primary financial statements of every business. Every business needs to have these four statements. One, the income statement. This is also known as a profit and loss statement. The income statement, number one. Also known as profit and loss statement. Okay, P&L, profit and loss, income statement. The income statement has uh, two key items, revenue and expenses. Revenue and expenses on the income statement. The second one, statement of stockholders' equity. This is all, always uh, uh, sometimes called the statement of retained earnings. Statement of retained earnings is also the statement of stockholders' equity. This statement tells us how much we have retained in the business. And what you'll see on there is you'll see retained earnings minus any dividends paid. A dividend is when we make a payment to business owners for their share of ownership. That's a dividend. We'll talk more about that later on as well. On the balance sheet, again, there are three primary categories. We learned about this already. Assets, liabilities, and equity. Those are the th assets, liabilities, and equity are the three primary categories you'll find on the balance sheet. On the balance sheet. That's why they call it the balance sheet. It's where the accounting equation is in balance. The fourth Primary financial statement is called the statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows. Cash flow is the physical flow of cash. I earlier I said separate the idea of revenue and expenses from actual cash. The statement of cash flows is what tracks the actual movement of cash. Cash coming into and out of the business. There are three areas that we record cash. First is on the statement of cash flows is called operating activities. That's the day-to-day -day operations of the business. That would include cash coming in and out of the business for operating activities, day-to-day -day activities of the business. The second area is called investing activities. Investing activities. On the statement of cash flows, investing activities are investments that the business makes in property plant and equipment the business can buy and sell 
property, plant, and equipment. And because of that, we track the cash flow from those types of activities. And the last one is called financing activities. Financing activities on the statement of cash flows is where the business will take out loans, issue stocks, issue bonds in order to finance the business. Okay. Professor. Yes, please. How, uh, where, where would you classify uh, donations? Donations, Philip. Good, uh, good question. So, a donations coming if it's a if it is a nonprofit business, we have donations. Donations are recorded as revenue. Donations for a nonprofit business are recorded as revenue. If it's donations that are just from business owners that are donating money to the business, that would be in the in equity. In equity. Okay. Does that help to clarify your question, Philip? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, summary. Income statement is revenue and expenses for each month. Revenue minus expenses equals uh, net income. Revenue minus expenses equals net income. That is your income statement. We record that every single month. Statement of stockholders' equity are changes in uh, stock <clears throat> for a period of time, usually a year. Sometimes we record it every month as well. Depends. We only record it when there's an actual change. Balance sheet is a list of a company's assets, liabilities, and equity. We usually list it in the form in the in liquidity assets. On the left side of the balance sheet, on the right side of the balance sheet, is your liabilities and equity. Statement of cash flows is a list of cash payments and receipts for operating, investing, and financing activities. And we usually report this every month. Is that the yes, why not? Okay, um, investing activities, it says a business can buy and sell property. And what were the other two? I couldn't like that. Sure, yeah. So on the statement of cash flows, we have operating activities. Yeah. That's that's the day-to-day -day uh -huh. operations of the business. And we have investing activities. That is uh -huh. when we buy or sell property, plant, and equipment. And then we have financing activities. Financing activities is when the company is trying to ra uh, basically raise funds. That's when we issue stocks, bonds. The company might take out a loan, something like that. That's financing. That's when we finance the business operation. Okay. Thank Good you. question. Absolutely. Okay, let's break down the income statement a little bit more. The income statement shows your revenue minus your expenses equals net income. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the very basic uh, of the income statement. Revenue minus expenses equals net income. We show this over a period of one month, and we there, there's usually a new income statement every single month. It starts at zero at the end of at the beginning of every single month. Starts at zero. How does it start at zero? We close out the income statement accounts to the balance sheet under equity. Under equity. We'll talk more about that. Statement of stakeholders equity is reported at the end of the accounting period to show any changes in, in equity or business ownership. Uh, and we usually do that either monthly or yearly but we only do it when there's an actual change. Because most of the times business ownership, it doesn't change month to month, typically. But if it's if it's a publicly traded company, it, it probably does because a lot of people are buying and selling uh, stock. Balance sheet. Balance sheet represents assets, liabilities, and equity for a company. 
it's recorded at specific dates, it's always on a rolling basis, always on a rolling basis. The balance sheet, I can look at it at any given time and see how much cash do I have in the bank? How much do I owe people? How much uh, equity do I have? At any given time, I can look at the balance sheet. Uh, statement of cash flows, uh, it's carved out in operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And this is the physical flow of cash in and out of the business for each area. Operating activities comes from the day-to-day -day operations of the business, receiving cash from customers, paying our expenses. It's incurred during that uh, 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 given time period. Investing activities, this comes from uh, the purchase or sale of property, plant, and equipment. Financing activities comes from the business issuing stock, purchase, uh, uh, is, uh, taking out a loan, anything to do with financing, financing the business. Paying dividends to investors, that type of stuff. How are these related? You might be asking, how are these financial statements all related? The income statement is related to stockholders' equity. Why? Because at the end of each month, we close out our income statement to get it back to zero. We, we put all of the, the revenue minus expenses equals net income. Net income gets translated onto stockholders' equity. It's a form of stockholders' equity. Sometimes it could be a net loss if the business lost uh, revenue that month. That's how the income statement and balance sheet are related. Uh, the uh, what, But what about the relationship between the balance sheet and the statement of stockholders' equity? Well, uh, stockholders' equity gets transposed onto the balance sheet. Remember, the balance sheet has... Uh, assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. At stockholders' equity, guess what? That's equity. And the, the same dollar amount on the uh, statement of stockholders' equity shows up on the balance sheet under equity. And how does the balance sheet relate to the statement of cash flows? Cash is reported on the balance sheet as an asset. That same cash amount can be shown from cash coming in and out of the business from operating activities. That's how the, these financial statements are all related. Okay, we're almost at the end of this chapter. I, I know we're a little bit over time. So what does that mean? We'll probably have to hold it a Thursday session uh, for Chapter 2 because <laughs> Chapter 2 is just as long. But uh, it'll be relatively short. Okay. Here's a ratio I need to point out. This is the ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity. Oh, my God, ratios. So some students, they don't like ratios because it's math. But I promise it's easy math. <laughs> okay. These numbers will be provided to you uh, any time that you see these on, on a quiz or homework or, uh, or even an exam. Ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity. It helps managers or business owners to analyze the company's ability to pay its creditors. This is important for investors because I'm not going to invest in a company that can't pay its bills. <laughs> okay. So how do I know if a company can pay its bills? I compute the ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity. I take total liabilities which is found on the balance sheet, divided by total stockholders' equity, which is also found on the balance sheet. So you take those both dollar amounts from the balance sheet, total liabilities, divided by total stockholders' equity, to get the ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity. Here's a nice example. Uh, okay. Okay. So let's look at Twitter. Let's look at their um, year one and year two uh, ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity. 
we take total liabilities divided by total stockholder equity. Total liabilities divided by total stockholder equity. So year one, total liabilities divided by total stockholders equity for year one for Twitter is 0.47, 0.47. Year two, total liabilities divided by total stockholders equity. What you're seeing here is the trend. The higher the ratio, the better. Higher the ratio, the better. I'm sorry, the lower the ratio, the better. What am I saying? Lower the ratio, the better. If it's less less than one, then we consider it to be in good shape. And that is the end of chapter one. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Holy smokes. That was a long one. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so what happened? We went over time. The time is now 1.37. The class was supposed to end seven minutes ago. I I know that most of you probably either have another class or you have something to do. So what does that mean? We will have to have a second session this week. We will host a session on Thursday from 11 to probably about 12. I figured it'll go about an hour for for chapter two. Um, So what does that mean? I'll I'll post an announcement uh, inviting you all to a second session this week to cover chapter two. I I thought that we had enough time to cover both chapters today, but we don't. Is that okay with everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, great. So what I'll do is I'll send out a, a, a separate uh, announcement and a calendar invite for this Thursday from 11 to, I'll call it 1230. So that way we'll have enough time to fully cover Chapter 2. And then going forward, we'll, we'll just meet on, on Tuesdays. Uh, because in most cases, we have enough time to cover both chapters. But because today's the first day, and we spent about 47 minutes on introductions and things like that. That's why, you know, today is a little bit different. So I apologize that we went over. Um, this. This It's not common that that happens, but sometimes on the first day, you know how it is, <laughs> especially, especially in our current learning environment. So uh, are there any questions that I can help to answer for Chapter 1 so far that you might have? I have just one question. Yes, please. What do like uh, we say like in the example uh, we pay land twenty thousand, okay? Okay. But what if that actually land worth more than twenty thousand? Are we like recording actually how much is it worth or how much we paid? How much you paid? Yep, you you only record how much you actually paid, not how much the land is worth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good question. Yep. Good question. I'm sorry, Lynette. So when will how much it's worth? So now that's how much we paid, but now our equity literally has gone up because it's worth more than what we paid. So yep. that will come at the end of the year, or yep. we put that on a. Um... It's an adjusting entry at the end of the year. That's right. Um, so, okay. so, so the way it works is, um, let's say, let's say you bought a piece of land. For twenty thousand, it's actually worth forty. Okay, so you record um, minus twenty thousand in cash, plus twenty thousand in land. On the equity side, you record the forty. Now, clearly, what's going to happen? It's going to be out of balance, right? So, how do we rectify that balance? We have what we call an appreciation account, appreciation account. That's an account that we create at the end of the year to to allocate that difference to the land account. Okay. And so that's that's where that difference comes in. So ultimately it does get recorded, but in terms of cash, we only record what we paid for cash. I got it. Good question. Are there any other comments, questions for Chapter 1? Are we all feeling okay? 
Yeah. Feeling okay. So I said, like I said, I'm, I was going to stick around after everybody else left. I had a, I have a question. Sure. Yes, please. Okay. So because we didn't get to chapter two today, because we only got to chapter one, does that do, uh, go to us chapter two being due on Sunday or no? Yeah, yeah it's, still, it's still due on Sunday. So basically so, we have to just go through chapter two by ourselves, right? No, on on Thursday I'm gonna I'm gonna host an uh another session. This Thursday I'm gonna host another session from eleven to twelve thirty. Problem. You don't have to do it on your own. Don't worry. No problem. I I I, I won't let you down. All okay. right. All right. No so, is there anything else? Anything at all? Enjoy your day. Yep, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you joining me today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Try to get outside. It's nice out. Um, but stay safe. Wash your hands. All that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do have one question. Yeah, please. Um, I wanted to probably buy, I wanted to order the hardback copy of the book. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You can do that. Do I still have access to the um, homework Absolutely. and stuff? Yes. yes. You'll still have access. Okay. Yep. Good question. And I have also, Pavel, one more question about the books. Do I need now to, uh, because I have a, like this all all access, but do you now, because I, I subscribe for like a free trial, do I need to cancel that or should I stay on that? It's, it's like 100 it, something dollar. It shouldn't make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, it should not make a difference. So, um, you know, uh, I, well, you could probably you should probably cancel it and then, um, uh, you know, I, like I said before, just send me that email and I'll contact the bookstore. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We'll get you set up. No problem. Okay, anything else? We're good? Okay. Well, everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Um, I'm going to stop the recording session. And uh, uh, I'm sure some of you need to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we'll talk. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Stop, share. I'm also going to stop the recording.